Hello guys, welcome to Venom introductory session for developers number four, where we will learn about Tip3 tokens, which is fungible token standard for Venom blockchain. In previous session, we already set up our developer environment. We already learned how to run, uh, how to build smart contracts, how to run them on blockchain, how to debug them using fancy tools like tools.venom.rs, and also we learned how to uh, how, how to use Explorer in in an advanced way so that you can um, see. Uh, the, the execution graphs of all the chain of transactions that you have. And today we are ready to learn how to actually use tokens and how, how, how the tokens work basically on, on blockchain. Let's recap how ERC20 standard works. So you have this token contract and the main feature of this contract is that you have this huge mapping where all the, the balances for each user is stored and when you want to do a transaction you need to decrease the balance of one user, change the, the, the value within this mapping, and increase the balance of another user within the same mapping. And this approach uh, implies that all the transaction should be processed one by one because you have a, a single structure for storing all of the balances. As opposed to ERC20 standard, the tip tree offers a bit different architecture where each user's balance is stored within a separate contract and you just have a root contract which stores the, the static metadata for the token and uh, is able to deploy uh, the, uh, the, the separate so-called token wallets for each user. And once you want to perform a transaction, you send a message to your wallet and in turn it sends the transfer message to another wallet of a recipient. Before sending a message, he decreases his balance, then send a message to another user, and uh, the reaction from the other side is to increase its own balance. And it's important to say that it's not only applicable for this specific standard or some other standard. This approach is applicable for any decentralized application built on Venom blockchain. So to summarize, instead of using huge mappings, you need to spread the records of these mappings and represent them as an atomic smart contracts on a, on a blockchain. So to say, you're using a blockchain as a huge mapping. As opposed to mappings, the smart, con smart contracts are able to send messages to each other. So you're still able to perform some logic on your blockchain state. So how do you get started with, 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 with Tip3 tokens? For that, you can, you, there are two ways. So you can go to docs.venom.foundation and find, find out how to create your own token using Lucklift and uh, to token smart contracts repository. But here, I'm going to show alternative way, the, the easier way, the no-code solution for, for token creation. It's called Token Builder, and you can find it on devnet.web3.world in the Builder section. Make sure your Venom wallet is connected and push the button Create Token here. In, then type some parameters of new token. Hope you're comfortable with that and sign the transaction. In a success pop-up, we see the token root smart contract address and the link to Explorer. Each token is represented by, by this token root smart contract. Make sure that the, the contract is active, press done, and head to the token page. So here I'm going to mint some tokens for, for me. For that, I copy-paste my address here. It's already here. And I'm minting 100 tokens for me. Let's make sure that our token is actually minted, but that I'm importing uh, my custom root token address in my Venom wallet, and now I can see my 100 tokens. Now I can work with that. So here I prepared some modified sample TSOL contract. To reproduce that, make sure that you have this line in your dev dependencies, which will add tip3 uh, implementation in your project, and, uh, and, and run npmi then you will be able to import uh, token interfaces and use them within your smart contracts. So the first thing I want to show is the I accept tokens transfer callback interface, which allows you to receive tokens in your smart contract. It works pretty simple. So you're uh, inheriting from I accept token transfer callback and overriding a function called on accept token transfer, which I will show later. But before using this function, we need to change a constructor uh, here to uh, so so on the deployment we will send a message to token root address uh, to deploy our wallet and for that we, we we also need to accept this token root address in the constructor so that we know where to send the message the first parameter of, the of, of this message is uh, our own address and the second is initial 
amount of gas which we want to put on our token wallet. I have implemented two more methods in my smart contract. Uh, the first one is on deploy wallet. And what it does basically, it accepts a callback from deploy wallet. So I pass the name of this method in a deploy wallet message and I receive message back with uh, my new brand new wallet address. And it's important to know that uh, on the very first line of this function, I, I'm making a check uh, that the NSG sender is actually a root address. So I only ready to accept this message from a root address because anybody can send me the same message and try to lie to me uh, and uh, tell me the wrong, <laughs> wrong uh, wallet address. The second method is an accept token transfer, which will be called when I receive uh, some tokens. And it will be called by my wallet with all the parameters uh, which specify the, the whole information of, of this transaction. And on the first line, I'm, I'm, I'm going to check that the sender wallet is actually my uh, wallet, which I remembered here. The second line is uh, emitting some event so that we know uh, that, that, that something happened. And the third one, I'm, I'm transferring all the gas back to the initial sender uh, so that I, 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 I don't spend some, um, some gas. So I, I have this parameter in, in an accept tokens transfer fu function, which says remain, uh, that, that there is an address basically where you can should put the change back. The last three lines I put here just to disable compiler warnings. And uh, like you may notice that there is a flag, 64 flag, which means that everything on top of spent, uh, spent gas should, should go with this transfer. So I'm transferring back everything which left uh, after uh, the execution of, two, uh, of, of the first two lines. There are no more changes in my smart contract. Everything else looks the same, except of new storage variables, uh, root, uh, root address and the wallet address, which is pretty obvious. I need to remember that to work with it. So the next thing I need to do is to modify my uh, deploy script. Uh, I have new parameter in constructor, which, which is the address of the root uh, contract. So I need to copy paste it here. For that time, I need to get back to Explorer. Uh, to, to DEX and copy paste it from the token builder interface. All right. Um, ah, I forgot the, this uh, new statement. Okay. Okay, let's run our deploy script. We have our sample contract deployed. Let, let's look on the explorer how, how actually the, the diagram looks like. So I'm going here, I'm going to the first message and, um, oops, wrong, last message, I'm going to last message and see how, which chain of transactions uh, worked out and, uh, and how, how, how everything worked out basically. So what I see is that the first message went to my uh, smart contract, which I deployed, then the next message deploys the wallet. Uh, here is my wallet, so the, the last one is my wallet, and it, it, it messages back with, uh, with the address of the wallet, and uh, after that I am remembering my wallet address. Basically that's it. So this is a constructor call. The next thing I want to do is to check how my uh, receiving logic works. So according to the onaccept token transfer method, uh, it needs to, it, it emits the thank you event. Uh, let's test it out. For that I am copy pasting my ABI going to venom.tools.rs Oh, oops, um, nah, it's called tools.venom.rs, all right. So I need to copy paste my ABI here, let's call it sample, sample token. And paste, um, paste the, the sample contract address here. All right, so we see that the last message was on deploy wallet. So basically this is a message back from token root address with our wallet address. So next what we are going to do is to send some, some tokens, paste the address of smart contract here and put, put token amount. Don't forget to click this checkbox so that your token wallet will notify the smart contract of receiving wallet with a on tokens transfer callback. All right, I'm typing, typing my password and click confirm transaction. Right, so the expected result now is we are going to see 
that the, the, the tokens uh, received by a smart contract successfully and the unaccept tra token transfer callback was called and the event thank you was emitted with the token amount and with my wallet address. So everything as expected. I propose to play with this code, try to uh, try, try to implement at least this functionality and then once you succeed with that import the iToken wallet interface and try to uh, play with tokens from your smart contract wallet. For that uh, you, you need to do pretty the same steps that we do with iToken root but instead of deploy wallet uh, you should call that transfer function and uh, pass some parameters here. So yeah, the homework is to figure out how to do it. And always rem remember that uh, if any issues arise, feel free to ping me or some moderators in Discord and uh, we, will, we will help you. See you in the next.